Welcome, welcome, vampires, werewolves, zombies, familiars, and all creatures of the night to this special silver screen podcast. I'm going to stop doing that mildly offensive accent now. <laughs> we are looking at 2014's uh, mockumentary, What We Do in the Shadows, uh, of course, uh, by Jermaine Clement and Taika Waititi. Uh, we are... Uh, joined by two guests today rather than just one but before we introduce them i am of course joined by my usual co-host dk welcome dk hello hello are you enjoying your pasghetti dk oh yes <laughs> i hope you like your worms <laughs> <laughs> uh, we are thrilled to be joined by uh, the two lads from another podcast uh, they're from the um Lad, not, not the Lad Bible. What am I talking about? The Nerd Lad Bible, Bible. <laughs> Nerd Bible podcast, and the, uh, they call themselves collectively Pasty Sheep. Uh, Connor and George, welcome to the podcast. Hello. Hi. I'm just here to Take... wash the dishes after five years. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I want to dress up as these knives. <laughs> I did mention uh, briefly off air. Uh, this is a return to the podcast for Connor, who did join me for a review of Scream. Uh, so yes, hello. apparently we're obsessed with all things uh, spooky. <laughs> Connor, but, uh, yeah, no, but my ma master liked me so much that I'm now he's familiar. I've been here for unofficially off camera for eleven months. <laughs> uh, I, I will but not my turn time you to into a vampire. You you will go away uh -huh. and go just do all the chores. <laughs> Yes, but yes, yeah. Master. Yes, I'll live in the basement. <laughs> and uh, of course, George uh, is joining us for the first time here on Silver Screen Podcast, and uh, looking forward to talking about the movie with you, George. <laughs> Right, well, it's good to uh, to have you uh, both with us here, Connor and George, uh, from, as I said, Pasty Sheep, and uh, I will get into a little bit about uh, where we first encountered this movie and stuff before the review, but before all of that, uh, I always throw it over to DK uh, to do a behind-the-scenes uh, and trivia section, so what do you have for us about what we do in the shadows, DK? Okay, well, Waititi and Clement wrote the script, but uh, never showed it to any of the actors. We just gave them a general idea what was going on, and then just to see what what happened. To that end, almost 125 hours of footage was shot. Editing it down to 90 minutes took almost a year. Clement and Watiti have said that they're considering allowing all the footage to be released online so fans can edit their own version. Oh. Now, Stu Rutherford, like his character, is an IT guy in real life, not an actor. He was hired on the understanding he would be working on computers for the production. Jermaine Clements on record as saying, when we wrote the script, we made him a big part of it, but we just told him he was going to be our RT guy. He told him he'd just been it a little bit, and every day he'd go, so when do I actually help with the computers? And we'd say, oh, eventually, just put that costume on first. He's a virgin! Because, <laughs> because we almost keep him silent. I think the whole time he thinks he's just being made fun of. Mm -hmm. Now, the building used for exterior shots of the vampire's house is Peter Jackson's old office. Hmm. And the hill where the vampires face off against the werewolves towards the end of the movie, it's actually the same location where Frodo and the hobbits hide under the root of the tree to avoid the Black Rider in Lord of the Rings. Oh, wow. What? Yeah. what? I did not know that. What? Yeah, what a heritage. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's pretty cool. Now, there was a funeral scene, though not included in the final cut, that sees the vampires throwing Peter's charred body into the harbour. The body was made yes. of polystyrene, and it drifted away and became lost. The production had to put out a press release for if the body washed up on shore, that it was just a prop, and, you know, please don't be alarmed. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, that is aren't scenes, real. Right? You'll forget about this. You'll forget about this. <laughs> <laughs> now, the yeah. film didn't initially do well on release, performing so poorly in New Zealand that the planned stateside release of the movie was cancelled. It eventually came to be distributed in the US after producers ran a successful crowdfunding campaign, now, during which the movie became the most pirated movie of 2014. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Nice. Yeah. And obviously, movies are quite different Something titles pirates, depending on the territory, <laughs> depending <laughs> on the territory in which they're released. But I've got to call out some of the names. This movie gets in other countries just because they're so good. In France, the movie is called "Interview with Some Vampires." That's Romania, the subtitle of the original thing. Yeah, sorry. Um, <laughs> Romania yeah. is "Tribulations of Modern Vampires," while in Taiwan, the official title is "Vampire Family Corps." <laughs> Okay. Well, <laughs> well Germany's is my favourite. They come in with five room kitchen coffin. <laughs> <laughs> what? That's, that's crazy. That's random. I love it. That's got a bad name if ever I heard one. 
<laughs> Definitely. What? Definitely. They supported Madness on tour in the 80s, I believe. <laughs> and, uh, and that's it for my behind the scenes, Mike. So anything you've got? Awesome. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I mentioned um, off air again, and I should probably have said that I went above and beyond with this because I had the Blu-ray of the movie. So I did watch the deleted scenes and I also watched the original short film that got the movie made, uh, which is very much like, uh, you know, <laughs> three uh, friends in New Zealand and a camcorder and very basic, you know, <laughs> special effects. Uh, but it's fascinating to watch to kind of see how it got from there to the movie and some of the similar jokes and some that are developed a little bit further so i can always chime in with little bits and pieces about that um but yeah i do uh, i do, do remember seeing the scene where they throw peter's charred corpse into the river in the deleted scenes it is pretty amusing but uh yeah bizarre to think that they were like oh no this could cause an incident let's alert the police <laughs> so yeah anyway um so yeah that would uh conclude that then so as i said I always like to ask you a little bit of backstory if it's a, a movie like this. Just wh where is it that we first saw the movie and uh, do we have any initial memories of what we thought at the time? Now, I'm assuming, DK, that the first time you saw it was this week for the podcast. <laughs> it was, yeah. As I told you before uh, we started recording, I'd honestly never really heard of it until I saw that it came up on the podcast list. Wow, okay. And have you, you are familiar with uh, Jermaine Clement and Taika Waititi, maybe? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, Tina yeah. Mins you know, various things uh, over the years. Honestly, yeah. uh, I'll, you know, a little, I'll preface it by saying dockier comedy, it's not my kind of favourite, but I was really impressed with this. Okay, fair enough. Awesome. Uh, well, what about you, Connor? What was, can you remember the first time you saw this movie and uh, what your initial Wait, impressions might have been? <laughs> I knew it was roughly um, after Four Ragnarok came out and Taika Waititi's name was in the mainstream and, you know, a lot of Google searches were about and it was just, again, a cheeky browse or two, looked at his filmography and it was all, oh, what we do in the shadow sounded interesting. And then, yeah. unbeknownst, it was on BBC iPlayer at the time, must have watched it on there. And it was just, I think it was literally just the time I found The Office. So it was it was getting used to like the, um, you know, the mockumentary format. So it was very jarring. But then I thought, oh, this is so interesting because it's about vampires pretending to be on camera. So I thought, this is, yeah. is going to be uh, <laughs> an experiment, to say the least. And yeah, I just I loved it. And then... After, shortly afterwards, they announced the series, and I thought, thank goodness for that. So it was all good timing. Yeah, the series is great as well. We've uh, we've all except DK seen the series as well, so it's always something that's going to come up because, well, it's mainly the same people involved uh, behind the scenes and such and creating it, so that's fair enough. So, um, George, do you remember the first time you saw uh, this movie and what you might have thought initially? I, I, th I think the first time I saw it, I think it was on like Film 4 or something, like a few years mm. ago. And it's not one of the ones that was on my radar. Like, I'd obviously sort of heard that there was, like, the TV show and, like, I know that Matt Berry's in it, so that's probably why I feigned interest in it. But then, <laughs> like, I, I, I watched this first and then was like, okay, now I have to seek out the TV show. Like, this is just, it's, like, it's been alluded to, like, it's such an ordinary style, like, with the mockumentary, mm -hmm. but to make, like, mystical, basically, like, supernatural beings mundane and boring is just it's yeah. so well done and i love how bland and dry like the humor is and just like sort of how it just how they fit together like these characters they all feel like the same like yeah. i know that they're different and they've got their quirks but they all just like feel like one like entity like they're really like um what's he clement and uh oh, fuck who plays deacon um oh it's yeah, I don't I don't know. Know. But <laughs> he, um, like they, together, they should I Google it? Oh, yeah, I've, I've got my phone up. Um, 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 Jonathan Brewer, yeah. yeah, Jonathan Brewer, yeah, R U G H. Yeah, he's very good. Um, I just I love the dynamic, and um, I don't know, it's just it's a spin on a normal format, really, isn't it? And it's just, yeah, I, I really do enjoy it, and it's I do need to buy it, but. Amazon doesn't have it, so that's a problem. Really? That's surprising. It's on Prime, so mm. that's, you know, how I rewatched it the other day. Ah, oh, well, fair enough, as long as you had a chance well, to did, The Blu-ray is, like, sold out at the moment. Oh, OK. Yeah. Oh, well. But I did watch it again on Prime last night. Ah, nice. I don't, I don't really you're... know what day it is anymore, lads. I won't lie. <laughs> yeah, well, you, you are yeah. a new parent, so congratulations, and, I, you know, you have my sympathies oh, no, at the oh, same oh, time. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah. but, um... Thank you. As long as you manage to pull yourself away from the kid for an hour and a half to enjoy the, uh, the dark comedy, then there you go. Oh, I waited till they were both. Asleep. I waited till um, they were asleep. So, 
Oh, fair enough, fair enough. Yeah, we're worried for the best. I'm, I'm sure <laughs> I remember it. So let, let, let's see how accurate my remembrance of this is. <laughs> fair enough. Uh, yeah, my story is quite similar. Basically, I caught this, this movie. Uh, it, I think it was also after I'd seen Thor Ragnarok and after I kind of knew who YTE and Clement were. Never actually watched Flight of the Concords or anything like that, but I know of it. Oh, um, no, then, no, no. Yeah. Uh, caught this movie, as I said, no, one I night, like 10 o'clock at night or something on BBC Two. Loved the movie. Uh, caught the series at a later time and think the series is even better than the movie. It's hilarious. Uh, but again, the series was created by Jermaine Clement, um, who created the movie along with Taika Waititi and the two of them do serve as executive producers. And if anybody's interested, yes, these characters do turn up more than once in the series. Uh, dun, dun, dun. It, yeah. uh, <laughs> it's definitely part of the same kind of shared universe, I guess you could say. And uh, it's always fun when, you know, Viago or Deacon or whatever appears. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's kind of my backstory with it, and we uh, we, we do the review now as a, kind of a little bit scattershot. We just tend to break it down into categories and talk about things as they come along rather than talk chronologically. Um, and with this one, I've kind of just personally broken down my notes into things like characters, and then talking about each of the character stories and things. So bear with me, but feel free to go off on tangents or whatever if you like as well. Um, so under the category of acting, like I said, I started mm-hmm. by talking about some of the characters in the movie and. The first character I had to talk about was uh, Taika Waititi's character, uh, Viago. Um, and so before I get into any of my notes, what uh, are you guys, do you have any thoughts on the character of Viago and uh, his plots throughout the movie? Um, I just mainly broke down quotes, just random quotes <laughs> in the runtime. So I haven't really got an order, I haven't got a structure. I literally just broke down random lines that made me chuckle. Um, but Fair Viago, he, he opens the movie, doesn't he? Taika is there yes. at the very beginning. He opens it. He's 394 years old, something like that. Um, <laughs> and he's essentially introducing us to the world of you know the, the house, which does look very similar to the one in the TV show. Um, yeah. And he's, you know, he, I guess he's, he's like the unofficial narrator. He is kind of like the audience's point of view character out of the, the trio initially. Yeah. Um, but uh, 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 yeah, I don't know. I can't comment at the minute about Watiti. But yeah, no. Um, yeah, he was cool. He was cool as always. Yeah. As always, he's great. Tiger's amazing. Definitely. Well, in terms of, like you said, he, he sets up the movie. So there's a couple of things which I think set the tone straight away. Um, the first one is when he's getting out of his coffin and it does the Nosferatu kind of rigid, straight up kind of special <laughs> effect, which you know, <laughs> yeah, it's just so bizarre to see just from this goofy guy. And it's like, ah, ha. Um, but then... <laughs> From there, there's a great bit of comedy where he's like, uh, this is always the most difficult part. And he's like sheepishly opening the curtains as if to double check and then goes, yes, we're safe. It's night time. <laughs> so, but uh, I love that. And I love that it kind of uh, it sets him up as the leader of the group, I guess, almost like the head of the household because he has to go around and wake everybody yeah. up and, and stuff. So, yeah. Um, yeah. What about you guys then, George and, uh, and DK? Any thoughts on uh, Viago? He is my favourite character throughout the movie. I love the scene later on where he's trying to uh, seduce and bite that the student that's wanting to go travelling and accidentally <laughs> hits the artery, and he's just like, I shit! That scene. <laughs> that scene is really good. <laughs> yeah. He's talking about how he kind of, you know, how he still feels things and everything, and then uh, the, the sheer comedy of the blood splurting absolutely everywhere is... His quality. <laughs> yeah. Well, she's talking and he's just like putting the newspapers under her feet. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Oh, bless. I can't even remember what it is that he says, but I know he has like a director camera after that where it's something like, well, that didn't go well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's blurred yeah, all yeah. over him. <laughs> but, yeah, that's fair. Um, did you have any initial thoughts on uh, Taika Waititi's character on Viago then? And uh, is he one of your favourites and one of your best? Um, I, th- I like Viago because he's kind of, he's he's kind of the most sort of like basic interpretation of out of the group like he's just like sort of stereotypical vampire in some ways in the aspects of his personality but he's very sort of human in like the way he sort of like interacts with the camera and the crew yeah. and um the way he holds himself and stuff so he's kind of like the entry point and then you obviously like vlad is you know just um <laughs> a, a lot less <laughs> subtle and deacon as well and then you've yeah. got um well i did read that- that the Nick while Vlad well. is based on Gary Oldman, Kawatiti yes. based Viago and his own mother. 
I did. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I, really, but, uh, I really want to see Taika Ritiki's mother in this in this series or in the sequel <laughs> film. I want to I want to see that. <laughs> or just out and about on the town, really, Connor. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that'd be that'd be best. But get her definitely. in the universe. <laughs> I think you can you can definitely see that because there's a certain like, effetness, I guess, to Viago that's very uh, very present. And uh, yeah, I think knowing that it's based on uh, Waititi's mom. It, it, explains mm. that a little bit and uh, he is kind of the fastidious one and that's the joke isn't it that he's the one that's like we need to have the chore wheel sorted and we need to do the dishes it's been five years yeah <laughs> it's the combination as you said of the mundane with the like supernatural the extra normal supernatural setting yeah yeah which, which just makes it so funny and uh <laughs> again there's th- probably just going to be a load of quotes that come up throughout this review but one of my favorites just apropos of nothing when they're talking about it and it's like uh, you got blood all over my nice couch the red couch well it's red now yeah. yes <laughs> yeah. yeah it's red now yeah. or the way that gets paid off would be you know put, put some newspapers down or get some towels or something you know we're not ever... <laughs> yeah yeah and yeah you could put the newspaper so down u- university <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah, with the two, <laughs> awesome. And uh, yeah, I like that he's kind of he seems kind of sweet to his victims. He doesn't seem like just vicious and brutal. But uh, he also he's also quite practical in that the whole kind of like yes, sometimes we do take our clothes from the victims. You might be biting someone and be like, oh, those are some nice pants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's a nice pants. Yeah, there's some nice yeah. pants. Uh, it's also kind of sweet that he gets the love <laughs> the love plot throughout the movie. That's his like through line is this woman uh, that uh, Catherine Catherine yeah Catherine and uh, <laughs> he went all the way to America for her and she's like in her nineties and uh, I, I, again yeah, um... that's some uh, it's a surprisingly kind of uh, dramatic and real moment when he talks about how she gave him this great silver necklace but he can't wear it for very long. Oh um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it gets. Dramatic, and then he like ruins the or well, not so much ruins, but like yeah. takes the dramatic tension to a comedic place when he's like he's wearing it and it's burning, and he's like, yeah. he's literally pointing <laughs> at his chest, and he's like, oh, but he loves it. That's so the much. longest I can wear it. <laughs> yeah, it's like, that's as long as I can do that. Yes. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. And then I can't remember how it all got set up, but when he says, "Oh," and then I got sent it. You know, he did it wrong, and it took me eighteen months to get there. <laughs> to get yeah, to yeah he put the wrong twenty yeah, in the container, yeah, the wrong order. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the wrong the... order. It took me 18 months. And then when I got <laughs> there, I found her and she was in love with someone else. <laughs> you said yeah, I would be a vampire. I'm now 90 years old. <laughs> it's awesome. And uh, related to that storyline, this is a joke that, I, for whatever reason, it didn't even register with me the first time I watched it, but watching it back for this, the fact that he takes like the picture he's printed out of this 96-year-old woman to the coffin, then you just see the coffin <laughs> lid just banging yeah. up and down like he's he's clearly masturbating. I want I wonder what yeah, I wonder what's going on in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was so weird. Um and then yeah, obviously they, they do kind of end up together and you do get the joke about, you know, oh, would would people accept a 96-year-old lady with a guy four times? Uh, the hell with it. The people can call it. me a cradle snatcher, I don't care. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, there's also one thing that uh, Whitey he does in character that is part of the original short, but it's done a lot better in the film for obvious reasons, which is when he's talking about how they have no reflection in mirrors. And he's like, oh, look, ghost cup. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> he's floating the cup. And uh, you can imagine how that looks in the kind of, um, you know, no budget student movie that they did, where it's clearly like a piece <laughs> of string floating the cup in this fake mirror and stuff. So. Yeah, yeah. For some reason, I forgot the last hour and a half, so I don't know what we're actually talking about. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even realise oh. the first time I watched it that there was like a post credit scene either, where they try to hypnotise you. Yeah, yeah. You'll forget, yes. <laughs> you, you forget this last hour and a half of this movie. You have not seen anything. Yeah. <laughs> it's literally like but 10 they're so bad at it. You know, it's understandable it failed in most of our cases because they're terrible at that hypnosis thing. Mm. <laughs> Like when uh, Deacon's getting rid of Jackie and she's like, you know, you did say you're going to make me a vampire. He's like, go, go away. <laughs> <laughs> go away. Speaking of Deacon, it's obvious that, uh, yeah, he's set up as kind of the young bad go- bad boy of the group. Um, yeah. <laughs> the, uh, the, the only introduction we really get to him, and again, it's present from the character's introduction in the short film, is that uh, he was a Nazi and he's like, he feels really hard done by because it's like, uh, you know, you're a vampire, it's bad. You're a Nazi, it's 
but you're a Nazi vampire? No way. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's such a, a weird way of... Get the hell out of there. <laughs> get out of there. <laughs> exactly. But then his plot throughout the movie just becomes that he's jealous of Nick as the kind of newer, yeah. younger, horror yeah. vampire. <laughs> So I do love that, like, he is so petty about, like, you know, he wants to go to this boogie wonderland that they always go to, and it's actually a you know, dive, it's a shithole, and uh, yeah. Nick's getting them <laughs> in all these cool places. And, uh, but I do like that eventually they do make up as well, you know, they come to an understanding at the end of the movie after they've had the big werewolf fight, so, yeah. That is amazing. Of... Mm. <laughs> it was amazing. Um, it was so good. Uh, the next character I think we're introduced to is uh, Peter, who is blatantly just, it's not for R2, isn't it? It's, it's not a Hell subtle yeah. homage. No. <laughs> no, no. They literally um, borrowed Universal's prop and went, yep, that's that's Nick it. <laughs> That'll do. With the, it's quite surprising to see in this kind of movie, though, because as you say, the, the vampire side of things, uh, the fact that they represent the old school like that. And I did read, I think it was a critics review or something that said that like Peter represents the old fashioned vampire movie that they are keeping locked in a basement and just paying lip service to and stuff. And I'm like, a little bit too deep. I think they're probably just making a gag to be perfectly honest. But, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And I, I have to say as well that I love the equivalent of that character that's played by Doug Jones in the TV show. Yeah. The, the, um, kind of, oh, um, yeah. 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 The um, elder Nosferatu oh, one. <laughs> Aaron. <laughs> Sorry, the it's Baron. the Baron. The fucking yeah, Baron. Exactly. I think a Grand Master, but it's the Baron. <laughs> <laughs> ah, the Baron. Yes, and it turns out it's not a title. It's because he can't have kids. He is Baron. <laughs> yeah, he's Baron. Yeah, that's right. No, as I was saying, in the movie, that I do like that they kind of did that kind of um, obvious joke about how, you know, because they're the older generation, they think it's all magical. And so I think it's Viago says, oh, I had a locket or something that I lost years and years ago. You can find it. Yes, Google it. As if that's going <laughs> to miraculously be like, oh, yeah, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> Google it. That's awesome. Um, yeah. Uh, what did you guys think of the character of Jackie then as the kind of only really human character, I guess, in this movie? She's um, like, obviously, like you can say it now, seeing the series, like she's Guillermo light really yeah. isn't she yeah, yeah um but obviously I, I like the aspect of like she's got like her family like her kids her husband and i like how the payoff of that at the end as well i, I, mm. I love you but i am your master oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah i am your master yeah <laughs> yes. um i think yeah i think she plays it really well um because it's that whole relationship you know you can either go like it's an imprisoned human or it's someone that's desperate to be a vampire and she kind of skirts the line of both a lot of times yeah, like because she's kind of been forced into it, so she's kind of making the best of it. And then, you know, she when she finally gets her wish of being a vampire, it's like right, then I can do all the stuff I want to do now. We assume yeah, that we haven't mm. haven't seen. But then, but then I've got yet. me thinking. I've got me thinking. Then what happens with her kids? I mean, all right, she's in charge of the husband. And what about the kids? Do they know she's a vampire? Oh, mummy, you know, you look paler than usual. Like, what happens to the kids? <laughs> she well, they they just turned them into little kid vampires. <laughs> <laughs> well, then so he's fucked. So he basically is, is their bitch forever. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, I've got a feeling That's she how marriage works, the... Connor. Because they do have that joke early on, how they're, they're talking about how, you know, if you're turned as a kid, you stay a kid forever. And they mention, yeah, and they meet up with them. Like, oh, what are you, you know, you have to kill some pedophiles or something. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which, again, surprisingly dark comedy, but it's like, I, am, yeah, I suppose, you know. <laughs> I became vampire at 16, which is why I still look 16. But, you know, in my time, it was hard yeah, life for 16 year olds. Exactly. Yeah, clearly. But, um, mm. One thing I did personally notice about the the Jackie character, though, that's not really present with uh, Guillermo, is that it gives you a chance to kind of to do that cliched sort of talking about gender and stuff. So the fact that she even yeah. gets the line about, I'm just saying, if I had a penis, I would have been turned years ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's pretty. Uh, awesome. This is a dick swinging contest. <laughs> Yeah, Which exactly. True, not just for the genre, but probably just for the industry in general, maybe. That, like yeah, exactly. Say, yeah. It kind of could have been a punt for the fact that, you know, male characters get kind of all the breaks and all the good stuff. Well, well yeah, and as you mm. the film the industry had horror as a genre yeah. and everything, yeah, definitely, 100%. Mm. But, um, yeah, and it is, it kind of feeds into the Deacon and Nick rivalry because it is Nick who eventually just turns her into a vampire off screen. She just turns up at the party mm. and she's like, Yeah, it was Nick that did it. And you can see Deacon just quietly fuming about that. Like, I was trying to get around to it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's awesome. Um, I like so, Nick. Yeah, the... Nick's a good character. <laughs> Nuck, yeah, Nuck. Can't even eat chops. <laughs> <It's not funny. laughs> so, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't eat that if I were you. Why not? <laughs> 
Oh, you know, not a lot of track stuff to be, so just don't believe the hype, is all I'm saying. I've been a vampire for two months. <laughs> That's the, really the, weird, the best, yeah. The best thing is flying, because yeah, everyone wants to fly, now I can do that. Nick, why do you not use the front door? Like, it can fly. Why, why would I use the front door? Why would I use the front door? Yeah, why would I use it? <laughs> Which is a lot of, like, our audiences would, like, you know, say about, like, these kind of things. Like, if they can fly, why wouldn't you just fly from A to B? But obviously, like, you've got to be yeah. subtle in, like, the middle of the fucking day or something. Like, well, not in the middle of the day, but, like... <laughs> That is a quality night. joke, though, when he basically turns that back around on him, when it's like, you're going to get to look the entire, everyone can see you flying all around the house, you've got to be subtle, and he's like, you've got an entire film crew here filming you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Oops. The camera's everywhere. Yeah. I'm going to kill you. I'm already dead. <laughs> yeah. I hope this is the last time you're dead. <laughs> I don't want to do this again. Exactly. Yeah. But no, Nick is uh, is an interesting character because he starts off as a human kind of sacrifice that Jackie brought for them. Um, and kind of unlikable. Thing. So I weren't really a fan of Nick as he was. He was annoying. I'm glad he died. Let's be honest. <laughs> I'm glad he died. <laughs> Ouch. Um, he, he is the uh, he, he's the kind of butt of the joke when it comes to the whole. Uh, you know, they're having a dinner party, and it's like, would you like some pasghetti, Nick? <laughs> ah, you, how are you uh, enjoying no, your worms, Nick? <laughs> oh, uh, fuck off, who are you telling me how to eat worms? <laughs> <laughs> and he's just, so matter-of-factly, he's like, I need to get out of here, these guys are weird, they talk all bizarre, and they feed you worms and stuff. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's ultimately Peter that uh, that kills and Oh, him. shit, Peter got him. <laughs> Peter got him. Which is pretty ironic, since Nick <laughs> basically leads to Peter's death later. <laughs> Spoiler alert, but... Uh, well, yeah. yeah. Oh, that, yeah, that's great. Yeah, and uh, as I, I've already mentioned, but it's kind of funny how they all kind of don't like Nick much, but they love Stu, his human friend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Like you mentioned already, TK, that he's like the, a friend of the the guys that made the film, and he his naturalistic performance is because he just kept getting told like, "Oh, it'll just be one," so you know, just a little bit here or there, and he is just a regular dude. <laughs> and yeah, but I'm glad you said that because I generally thought was he just meant to be a mute for like seventy percent of the film, and then as the, it goes on, he then speaks. But then, okay, now knowing that little detail yeah. it does make it better knowing that he was just an extra and then the it guy and genuinely like yeah when am i gonna fix computers <laughs> it makes yeah, it more exactly because they're doing more and more with him and it's like no no just just one mm. just this next scene yeah, just, just hang, on, hang, on. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> so, hang on hang on hang on hang on and uh to the point that like at the end when he's been clawed by the werewolf and turned and everything at that point he's got to be like yeah i'm, I'm pretty sizable part of this movie <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah something's going on here i've got a surprise for you <laughs> Stu! <laughs> Stu! <laughs> yeah. I also, uh, yeah, so Stu gives you the chance to bring, like I said, this kind of comment about the modern age interacting with the vampires and the computers because it's already kind of funny how they're talking about how they just want to flat together and they don't want to be in a big castle or whatever else. And <laughs> then you introduce like modern things and stuff. It's uh, it's pretty funny. It's also, on, on a similar note, it's Nick that goes around telling everybody he's Twilight. Which I yeah. Was... <laughs> yeah. The main guy from Twilight. I'm, I'm the main guy from Twilight. I'm the main yeah. guy from Twilight, yeah. Like that, that's his vampire frame of reference, as you said. Like, the others, they're all, you know, they're based on the Gary Oldman, Dracula, or Nosferatu, and he's like, mm. no, my frame of school. reference is Twilight. <laughs> you know? How many yeah. people have you told you were a vampire? Uh, no one. Uh, where that go? Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, uh. <laughs> There's that great scene, though, when he is literally just telling everybody and some people are just taking the piss and there's the guy in the uh, shop or whatever where he's like, oh, yeah, I can transform as well. And he's like, can you, can you? And then just turns his face truly terrified and just goes, yeah. <laughs> and then just, again, yeah, very like matter-of-factly, just like, don't don't lie. Don't lie about being able to transform. Or <laughs> well, like you say, when he's in the bar and he's like, and the guy says, I'm a vampire. And he's like, yeah, right, okay. And he's like, no, I'm a vampire. Like, oh, I fuck off. And he just runs away. <laughs> <laughs> and then as you said, the guy oh, who Ultimately, uh, the guy who ultimately gets him in trouble because like, oh, that's so funny because I'm a vampire hunter. He's like, ha, ha, now you're fucking not. Now you're not. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and it turns off. out he absolutely was, and he got Peter mm. killed in the end, and then got killed himself, of course. But uh, yeah, <laughs> but uh, yeah, and I do love that they actually turn, have a turn his head around the other way. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You can't just leave your mate oh, lying there. Classic, <laughs> classic, classic Burley type. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, he's oh there's so many great good. lines in this. It really is. It's it's just you know the movie probably is just going to be a series of quotes, but that's kind of that kind of movie. It's hilarious. So oh, it yeah, is. It's such it's such a it. quotable movie. Oh, 100 percent. Yeah, but even ridiculous it's like stuff the like room, that's, but not yeah. shit. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, that's a yeah. The room, but not shit. Put that, that on the poster. 
I was just going to say that's the kind of tagline I'd love to see on a poster. It's like the rum, but not shit. But no, I do. As I say, I do like the fact that they even show the ridiculous, like fighting as bats and whatever, and uh, getting thrown against the the garage door. Um, which again, they do a lot more with the whole bat thing in the TV show. Just which I, I kind of I miss that. I miss having Matt Berry scream bat as he turns. Bat, yeah, exactly. Yeah, bat. If I don't like the yeah. kind of your jive. Shit's gonna hit the wind. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh, you gotta now, now, my darling. Why the fuck would we walk home? That <laughs> I'm, I'm very aware that you've been quite quiet, DK. So I'm going to ask this next part to you. So, uh, what did you get a bit of a shock when uh, Reese Darby turned up and they did the whole kind of werewolf scene? <laughs> what did you with the I, I like that scene. We're werewolves, not swearwolves. Not swearwolves. Calm down. Yeah, he uses like the yeah. F slur and he's like, no, no, we don't do that. Right? <laughs> <laughs> we don't do that. Remember, we're werewolves, not swearwolves. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> and uh, because I'm I know stressed. who Reese Darby is as well. <laughs> <laughs> yes, at the end, I do swear because I'm stressed. <laughs> yeah. I'm the oh, alpha male. Awesome. I can't yeah, believe exactly. how feeling <laughs> he's in this movie. Yeah, wow. <laughs> exactly. Welcome to Jumanji. I mentioned it again to, I think that was, uh, it was maybe Connor or George I was chatting to you offline, but I did mention that as well as the TV sort of series spin-off based on this, there is a spin-off called Wellington Paranormal, which is just basically following the two police officers in this movie because they're so good yeah. in the way that they have the like intersection of their job with the bizarre and the weird, which is what their show is. It's like all the bizarre paranormal stuff in like Wellington, New Zealand. Um, but yeah, I have to talk about them because they, they, their character names are just their names. Like they absolutely kill it in that scene when they're just they're seeing all this weird stuff and you don't know whether the it's, I think it's uh, it's Viago who's like we don't know if this hypnosis is going to hold. We're just hoping for the best. He's <laughs> like, what's that? What's that up there? Pointing to the flying vampire. No smoke alarm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yeah, I know you guys are having fun, but uh, no smoke alarm. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> It's dangerous. Look at that. You've got, you got an open flame right next to that there. That's just, <laughs> well, dangerous. That bad, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Again, it's the, the, it's the... It smells funny in here. What do you call that? Barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> barbecue. Mm. Uh, you find out a bit too much, has he there? You can't just leave him lying on the floor, though. <laughs> I don't know where his soul is, but where's his blanket? <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. So oh, yeah, um, what did what did you think of those uh, two cops and that scene in particular? Then uh, you guys. <laughs> well, they literally like when they're in. Uh, we like to step inside, and she's literally got the flashlight staring at um the fucking whichever character is at the ceiling, and they're like, <laughs> no smoke alarms. <laughs> yeah, no smoke alarms. It's like really. Or the yeah, fact that um, fucking me. Vladimir is grabbing the leg. <laughs> like, no, yeah. no smoke alarms. No smoke alarms. <laughs> It's great. Yeah, I thought they were really good. Uh, again, quite naturalistic. It was pretty cool. Um, the last thing I have written in my notes under acting, which I don't know why they are here. They're just sc scattershot. Um, but the last thing I have noted is that the I remember the first time I watched this, the quality mislead about the beast just turning out to be like uh, Vlad's <laughs> ex-girlfriend and just a, regular, <laughs> just a regular woman, more or less. You know? <laughs> the, beast. Beast. No, the thing is, ah, the so thing is I, I, I watched it today and I generally thought like, I, I remembered like 80% of the film, but when it came to the beast, I remember them talking about it, but I was like, who is this beast? I was thinking, is it going to be something stupid or supernatural? But when I found it, it was just a regular woman that used to date. I was like, I mean, oh, a vampire okay. woman, but still just a woman. Who's like <laughs> yeah, yeah just and... a woman. I was like, oh. Yeah, he's <laughs> broken his heart many times and it's that old fashioned, again, cliche about like, uh, you know, he has that one scene where his makeup and everything makes him look really haggard and terrible because he's like finds out that she's getting uh, like guest of honor or whatever when he thought it was going to be him and he's so hurt by it. And then again at the end of the movie, in typical fashion, they're just back together again, and just having weird vampire sex. <laughs> yeah. I do like that when everybody's going to the party and he and he's just there. Leave me to do my dark bidding on the internet. What are you bidding on? <laughs> a table. Dark bidding on a table. Yes. <laughs> 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 It's true. <laughs> yeah, I love it. And I thought I thought that actress who played the Beast actually did a really, really good job as well. Because she doesn't turn up till the very end of the film and then she kind of has to sell this joke, I guess, the the punchline to the joke. And then, as you say, she's kind of... She's the one that calls out Stu as being a virgin and everything and uh, talks about, you know, should this camera crew be here and everything? <laughs> you can't cool. eat Stu... Or the ca maybe one cameraman, but <laughs> yeah, maybe one cameraman, but yeah, exactly, yeah. but uh, yeah. So um, 
I was going to say, no, he's kind of like a human. <laughs> <laughs> As I've mentioned, uh, t- talking about writing and stuff now, that um, we- we've more or less uh, pointed out that this obviously part of one of the main parts about this movie is that it has the the mockumentary uh, sort of fake documentary framework. Um, so, what did you guys make of that? Did you think it was an interesting kind of choice, or because uh, again, that's that's how the short film sort of began. Was as I said, it was called interviews with some vampires, and it was just like the mundane documentary talking to vampires and. Yeah, what were your thoughts on that? I like it because it's well, sort, of the, sort of the expectation, really, doesn't it? So, like, yeah. um, I, I find it mainly in... Is it the fight between Nick and um, Deacon, like, when it's sort of, like, on the scene and stuff, like, it's it's such a weird angle, but because it's it's a person... Fi- like, it's meant to be a person filming it, not as in, like, it would be in a, like, blockbuster or whatever. Like, you would be on mm. the scene and with them or, like, follow it around or do, like, a kind of yeah. inception style like yeah. the corridor would turn like it's so weird yeah, like yeah, the yeah. framing the framing's really weird in certain things but it works for the style because it's say it w- it bringing would be everything down it's to like... a normal level yeah i say it, it say it would be like because like literally like you just said about the whole it's not a blockbuster and yeah they are literally vibing off of inception and gone oh let's do a creative shot because they know it's just one person with a camera they know they can't really do that so that's why it looked mm. janky and off um um Impressive. no but <laughs> Change a topic. Can we just talk about the werewolves? Oh, sorry, not swearwolves. I can't swear. <laughs> <laughs> the, the swearwolves. Definitely, yeah. I mean, we talked a little bit about uh, the first time they appear, and obviously uh, it was a nice surprise, because I said, because I like, knew Lee Reese Darby from other stuff, and so he's always funny. Uh, so it was a nice, pleasant surprise, and I wasn't expecting him to turn up again at the end of the movie at the least uh, opportune <laughs> moment, and then have the big, huge kind of rumble, and uh, yeah, seemingly kill Stu, and then turn him, and then as I said, Reese Darby's uh, just great. And, and I know it's probably, uh, like as DK mentioned, it's probably 99% improvised, and I'm sure it was in this case, but it's the scene over the credits I love where Reese Darby's like, what are you laughing at? What are you laughing at? Because he's like going to be the alpha. I'm and he's like, what are you laughing at? I'm just, I'm just well, don't just don't do that. And then he says something to Stu, and he's like, what are you laughing at? Oh, I was laughing. Cause, yeah, that's, see, that's fine. Be like that. Be like him. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I mean, like how uh, that sort of all that stuff works as well for the like like you were saying about the mockumentary framework, like for that whole mm. like a face off between vampires yeah. and werewolves, like in the park, and it's yes. literally <laughs> the main character turn like you got, run <laughs> like as they're fucking to take off the clothes yeah. that you want to get. Nick, you've only just bought yeah. that jacket. <laughs> 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 yeah, when they're changing themselves, obviously. Uh, why do you put a padlock on it? If you can away, remember the fucking almost... padlock. <laughs> oh my, oh, I forgot because I lost my key last time. I, like, I like how like they're running away, but obviously almost like in the way of like a wildlife documentary mm. thing. Like they're still trying to film the like the animals themselves. Yeah. I think it, it, kinda, and... it does cover up the potential kind of bad effects as well because the fact yeah. is that yeah. you can't really like zoom in and can't focus on it. It is like this Gonzo style of oh, it's just somebody who's running trying to capture these images. So what could be like that's mm. a terrible werewolf costume is just like. Who cares? You're seeing a fleeting glimpse of it in in what seems very much like the real world because it's filmed as 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 is, you know, as, as reality. Yeah. So I and like obviously, like really... at, in, at night with out like you know, um, with just natural light mm. instead of like setting up the light, so you're getting like it's like exactly, hiding yeah. more of it, like just like you said, more real. It's almost found footage based, literally Blair Witch Project inspired, and just yeah. it feels authentic. And it is literally us on our phone or our camera going, Oh shit, there's people turning to fucking wheels, run for your lives. There's no <laughs> yeah, cuts exactly. or fancy editing. It's just, Oh fuck, we're gonna get yeah, eaten. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I think we've, we've talked more or less about this, but I have got sort of noted under writing as well. Um, that it is what works really well is obviously we've we said it to the mundane with the ridiculously bizarre and paranormal and that's emphasized straight away with the whole like flat meeting the fact that peter's definitely not going to be there <laughs> because he's like he never goes from the basement and he's two thousand years old or whatever and yet they're, they're sitting there having this flat meeting and talking about chores and then as you said because it's filmed in documentary style it is quite shocking and kind of weird when uh they, they get into a fight and they just like fly at each other basically <laughs> it's like oh <laughs> And then they just sit down and say, I'll do the dishes, whatever. <laughs> but, uh, I like that. I like and how I they like... managed to keep that feel for the show as well. Like you sort of like definitely it, it feels yeah, the same, yeah. but just a bit more polished, I think, for when it gets mm, to the series. Mm. Definitely. Because obviously and there is a bit more that, money behind it. Yeah. Speaking of that though, I also uh, like how the series like this uh, film does the cool thing of showing you 
the vampires through history by the use of like ancient lithographs and paintings and stuff mm. um, on yeah, them and yeah. through the ages uh, to the, the really cool song You're Dead the by Killer Norma, yes. Norma Tanega, um, which again they use in the TV show for the Predator. Oh, I see, I forgot it was in this film. I, I didn't think how, I couldn't remember how it was this intro, but I was thinking, oh, it's like, is the song going to be in this film? And then when I heard it, I thought, oh, good, it is canon. I thought, cool. I thought the yeah. TV show created the song and I thought, oh, okay. But no, to no, no. see it in the film before then, I thought it was, you know, it was just a nice touch. No, it was a heck of a how fight, it actually, because, yeah, it's, it's not really, obviously the film doesn't really have a lot of music and you can't really talk about like a score or whatever no. in that sense because it is no. very, you know, documentary found footage. But that was a really good find because it just happens to be a song from like the 50s or 60s by an actual singer that the filmmakers found and were like, this fits our tone really well. And yes, it does. <laughs> it really works. We did, we did. So, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, the next question I had, then I'm going to direct this at you again, DK, because why not? Because you were you were fresher to this movie. Um, what did you think? Were you surprised at the various like two month and then several month time jumps that happened in the film? Because I remember being a bit shocked at that. Not, not particularly. It just seemed, uh, you know, one of those natural progressions that you often find in documentaries. Uh, yeah. I did think it helped, you know, it pushed narrative along. It, I guess it was... Not shocking as such, but it, it kind of the first time it happened, it took it took a little getting used to. But yeah, I think it worked. Yeah, well, fair enough. Fair enough. It's and, also uh, a good way to like frame and structure the film. So you say like literally the first, you know, chapter. It, even though it's not a chapter, but, you know, the first block of the film is like this section. Then the second section is like say the one with the werewolves, and then the third is the unholy masquerade, and then what happens with the werewolves at the end. It's just a good way to kind of like break it down and if you're like oh you want to watch this bit and go to this bit and whatever you know it's just a good way to yeah. sort of block and paragraph yeah. the film a little bit it's like you're watching three short films almost into yeah. one feature in a way and it it does have a narrative function in that you don't you, you kind of need nick to not be freshly turned in that scene so he, when he comes back oh yeah, like, yeah, yeah yeah i've been a vampire for two months but then it does flash back to like what he literally did go through at first and stuff, but you're not seeing that in the same way that, again, not to keep referencing the show, but we see the Beanie Feldstein character. We literally see the progression of her as a vampire, like through three or four episodes at, at the end of that season. Spoiler alert. <laughs> and, uh, um, but I think that would have dragged the film down and it would have taken way too much time. So it's nice to be able to get to the whole, oh no, I've been a vampire for two months. This was what it was like. And now this is where we are. And I think I'm Twilight and everything, you know? So yeah. that's pretty cool. Um, what did you guys make of the when they started again? It, because it seems like a documentary, and then there's random decisions like when they you think they're dressing up all cool to go out and they do like a bizarre fashion montage of all these like really old fashioned, really crap clothes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which I was like, what's what's this about? Would this really be in a documentary? You know. But, uh, so, did you guys appreciate that? Did you think it was uh, was worth a gag? Or... Oh, no, yeah, it, I think just show showed... choices. Yeah, it... sorry, go on, Connor. Yeah, no, literally, I was just gonna say it just shows that they are like not from this time, and they ha and they mm. do have their ways, and they're all from different decades. Because like Viago is three hundred years old, Vladimir is something like eight hundred, and then you know Peter is fucking eight thousand because he's yeah. you know, a husk. <laughs> and it, it just they all you know it just shows again, no matter how old the vampire is, they've all got their own taste, and they're all from different eras and everything. And vampires do fucking last a long while, providing they don't yeah. obviously burn to death. Yeah, yeah, but it, I do love that it 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 sets out to know what kind of humor it, it's aiming for, and it's it do, it does stick to it throughout because even little things like when they're going out, they have to get the bus to go to the, like the nightclubs, and, stuff. <laughs> and again, it's just the surreal idea of like these three vampires dressed ridiculously just taking a bus. You know I mean? and, it, uh, it's an image. It is something to see. Yeah, it is. It's really like what. <laughs> So Regardless if you of, took it seriously or not, it is yeah. such an image just to see like these immortal figures, these mythical supernatural deities that you should fear and run for your lives. And oh fuck, it's the vampires, and you just see them doing normal, mundane human things. It's, that's the whole point of the movie. It's amazing. Definitely, it's so it's um, amazing. The thing about that scene as well is that I have a feeling it was a kind of a last minute rewrite or decision because. On the deleted mm. scenes when they're heading out to the various kind of pubs and clubs and stuff, they get out of a taxi and hypnotize like the taxi driver yeah. so they don't have to pay him. And I'm like, oh, it's so weird. Because I think it's funnier that they do the whole like, no, they're just going to have to get on the bus and <laughs> <you know? laughs> mingle with the people who are all just mocking them kind of thing. So that was an interesting yeah. kind of, uh, you know, turn around. And, uh, 
So, uh, yeah, I have to kind of talk about this, one of my favorite scenes, which is the dinner party scene, when it's basically like Jackie getting chastised for bringing the, the worst uh, possible people to her party, and they may not even be virgins, and this poor woman who Jackie's like, well, she, I thought she was a virgin, would you sleep with her? And I think yeah. it's uh, <laughs> oh, the deacon of lad that's like, yeah, I would. <laughs> I, like the, uh, I like the one with Nick. He went, well, you were a virgin when, when I was seeing you. I was 12. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was 12, yeah. Exactly, yeah. Uh, but yeah, they do the whole, as I've referenced already, the whole Paschetti becoming worms thing. Uh, they mention yeah, quite lampshading the fact that that's stolen from the Lost Boys, which I like as well, that these <laughs> vampires are so kind of like uncool that they're just stealing vampire things from films and TV, um, which you know feeds into later on when he's like, you can't dress as Blade, he's a vampire hunter. But vampires love Wesley Snipes. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's kind of cool how they uh, they bring the real world into that to give it that reality as well. And uh, in that same scene, in, in terms of like I was saying, sometimes the special effects don't necessarily hold up, and the, that's where the style uh, feeds in. How freaking terrifying was it when they mentioned that Vlad used to be able to shapeshift into various animals, but now he can't get the faces right? Mm. And there's just that split <laughs> second scene of the cat with Vlad's face, which is one of the <laughs> most disturbing things. The most horrifying <laughs> image of the movie, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Like, that but, then, like, just, but then, like you say, I love that they don't scene, linger you... for too long. Yeah, exactly. All right. Like you say, there's I swear there's a deleted scene where it's Vlad like topless and you see a pair of eyes around his nipples. I think that is a deleted scene. It's just like, why why on earth? What is that? <laughs> um so other than that, I just have a few, I'll just maybe throw a few kind of uh, I said scenes, but then I've just written quotes basically. So <laughs> I'll throw a few at you. And uh, this isn't so much a quote, but I do love the fact that they go with the whole vampire mythology of having to be invited in. So they're having such awkward times at the bars and stuff when they're like, invite us in, tell us to come in. <laughs> and, uh, again, there's a quality deleted scene where they have to leave one of the bars because the bouncer's just like, uh, uh, do, you want, do you want to go in? No, you have to invite us. Are you inviting us in? No, I'm saying you can go in if you want to. Yeah. You, have to you, you have to go and see. <laughs> You have to go and see Janine there. Uh, is yeah, Janine Jean inviting yeah. us in? No, she will just take the money if you decide to go in. Yeah. So is that an invitation? No, I'm just saying you can go in. <laughs> yeah. like, Janine, oh, oh. hello. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> but, uh, yeah, I kind of love that it plays on these vampire tropes and stuff to that funny of a level as well. And uh, like I said, the idea that the vampire kids would be off killing perverts was a fun twist on that as well. And uh, it almost kind of made them morally good and morally likable. It was like, oh, they are doing something decent in their spare time. Yeah, I noticed that <laughs> a lot in the movie. Because well. even when Viago does that comical, like, biting and then blood splurts everywhere, he seems like he genuinely <laughs> oh, is, shit. like, sad about it. Yeah. <laughs> like, he's trying to make it comfortable for the poor student woman. And in the end, he's like, yes. Well, yeah, no, he says that. He's, he, he's like, oh, i got to make them feel comfortable in the last moments. <laughs> yeah, oh, exactly. <laughs> So yeah, it doesn't necessarily portray them as like monstrous or whatever. And even Viago has no. that open head where he's like, you know, people say we have cold, dead hearts. Well, it's definitely dead, but I don't think it's all that cold. I think we can still feel, you know. So it's an interesting hmm. angle to take. I on definitely that feel one. something. Yeah, he's like, you yeah. definitely feel something. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> the thing I've written down here, and I have no idea what this is. This is one of those really weird, surreal things where it probably came from like a really tired, like um, just batting stuff about random improv session but it's like they're talking about like things that could happen to you like oh life is so fragile you could do such and such and it's like you could make a mask out of practice yes. and get savaged by a dog <laughs> I was like, what the frick does that have to do with just die of old age <laughs> exactly but, uh, even, yeah, even old terrible. age is cruel <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So I'm just going to throw it open then because that's more or less as much as I had until we get to like favorite character moment and conclusions and such. So did you guys have anything that you wanted to talk about with uh, with regards to the movie or favorite moments, etc.? I like the um, whole thing about we drink um, virgin blood because it sounds cool. <laughs> yeah, because there's me thinking it was actually a like this. Where he's like, oh, I mean, you're cool. going to eat a sandwich, would you just enjoy it more if you know no one had fucked it? Um, <laughs> yeah, that's probably quote yeah. of the movie. That's probably quote of the movie, that one. <laughs> that is my yeah. favorite line, which I'll get to when we get to that section. But yeah, that was my favorite, uh, my favorite line for sure. I'm, apart from that, I really like the um the trial of Nick, like when they're like, you know, uh, first <laughs> thing, 
First crime, he bought a human, but we, we liked you, so we'll cross that one out. <laughs> yeah. um, he says something, and then he's like, a, the that, was pretty, that was pretty minor, but I was thought we would just build up. <laughs> yeah, because it's like, uh, and then he bought, like, Vampire Hunter was, like, number two. And then, like, thirdly, like, uh, Killing of Peter, well, that really should be crime number one, but we're kind of building up. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. and, um, <laughs> now start the procession of shame. <laughs> shame, shame, shame. Right. Yeah, as I've, I've already mentioned it, but my funniest part of that is just the fact that they still like Stu and they're like, Nick, you are exiled. You're never to come back. But Stu, if you want to come around, then yeah, if you want to bunk, yeah, if you want to bunk in, <laughs> and Stu and like, him say man a few words, he just kind of like he shrugs and he's like, mm. yeah, and, and Nick's I mean, just there like, Stu, come on, you coming, mate? You come, come on. <laughs> yeah, it's really good. Um, so, do you want to get into your favourite character moment and line then? We may as well. Um, so, I will hit up all of us individually, starting with you, DK, and ask for who's your favourite character and why in the movie. Uh, I think it has to be Viago. He's just so affable. Yeah, <laughs> fair enough. Mm. And, uh, yeah, the, the film's kind of co-writer, creator, director as well, which helps. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, so Red gets the best lines, but I think Viago's a more, I don't know, more in tune mm. with the audience kind of character. He's more of a lead. What are some of your favourite Vlad lines? If there's any we haven't mentioned, by the way, then if you think he I do love the, I do love the one outside where he's banging, it, where he's, he's like saying to the guy, "See me, see me," and then sort of rapping on the window to get his attention. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to come in? <laughs> no. It goes on for like a good thirty seconds. Do you think to you think the point it ain't gonna work, and then he eventually does go over to the window. I think that's what makes it fun. Yeah. <laughs> such a long dragged out scene. Yeah, definitely. Awesome. awesome. Uh, so what about you then, uh, Connor? We'll come to you next. Who's your favourite character and why in the movie? Um, I kind of like them all, but I think the one I go to is Vladimir. <laughs> um, right? But Vlad the Polka. <laughs> Vlad the Polka. I'll go for a look, which I call Dead But Delicious. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. That yeah. one. <laughs> yeah. I we haven't really talked to... Delicious. I haven't really talked about that joke either. That the kind of because he's based on Dracula, who's famously Vlad the Impaler, they make the joke about he's mm. known as Vlad the Poker because he used to poke all of his enemies. And then when he's like, uh, you know, the shit hit the fan later on and he's all depressed, and it's just showing you each of the vampires doing their own thing in their room. And there's just a naked person hung up with him, like poking a poker into them. Just, <laughs> completely matter of fact, just, just there in the background, and then he just closes the door. Yeah, I appreciate it. I like the fact where he's where they're on Facebook and he said, and you can poke it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, I did. <laughs> That's a good point. He yeah, was an 18th that. century dandy, so he can be very classy. Exactly. So, George, what about you? Who was your favorite character and why? In the um, movie? I like, kind of said, like, I like him all, but I really do like Vlad. I think Jermaine Clement plays him really well. I like the whole, um, a bit at the beginning where they talk about like oh like he's from medieval times so like um, some of his views are a bit back we should get some slaves yes yeah <laughs> <laughs> and when he fucking he, um so when vlad um shoots uh, viago with an bow and arrow in the leg. Oh, yeah yeah <laughs> gonna mention that at the beginning yeah because oh, <laughs> yeah, what are you mentioned about um Somewhat, uh, was it Viago getting hurt? And then I wanted to interject with <laughs> fucking Vlad shooting Viago at the bow and arrow. <laughs> Ow. But I do also oh. like, um, what's, oh, what's his name? Um, main werewolf, uh, Anton. I like him as well. Oh, yeah. The yeah. Whole, um, he's like, I, just, I'm get, I get stressed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Reece Darby is great in a very He is really good. <laughs> and um, the way that sort of is... Um, like take it. I would say that it's not done as well in the show. Like the whole werewolf, like that face, that initial face off of the werewolves and mm. the vampires. Like I like how that's carried over, but I think it's done better here. Like yeah, in, it's more of a yeah. Shot, yeah. a lot of the things. Yeah, like a passing yeah. sort of like a nod to it, really, isn't it? And the way that some of the characters are set up, uh, like I feel like Vlad is very much walking so that um, Laszlo can run. Mm. Definitely, in yeah. some respects. Stu is the first yeah. human friend that I've had for a long time. With humans, there's a tendency to die. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Well, um, I, I, I'm I, with um, DK. We have, you know, five, my favourite character was Viago, because I think he, because he leads the humour and the plot, and he is the kind of mm. the guide through this. I think sets that's the tone given, as well, doesn't he, really? Given, yeah, and sets the tone absolutely as well. But um, I do find it amusing that, therefore, between us, two of us have picked one of the core 
writer directors and two of us have picked the other one yeah, the other one yeah <laughs> <laughs> so it goes to show talk about giving yourself the best two roles in the movie you know but, uh, no offense deacon you're great but why, why have yeah. you come back <laughs> <laughs> poor jonathan bro or whatever <laughs> yeah <laughs> nobody's interested um so, yeah. sat there somewhere <laughs> where no one gives me credit <laughs> <laughs> it's because I'm a Nazi, isn't it? <laughs> well, I yeah. Stay away. Stay right away. <laughs> so, um, yeah, the next thing would be what was your favourite moment or scene in the movie then, DK, starting with the, with you again? It's just the scene with uh, the police, especially in the basement <laughs> where the, with the, uh, the vampire hunter and the coffin laid on top of him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yes, oh, fair enough. Uh, what about you then, Connor? What was your favourite moment or scene? Um, again, continuing that police scene, it's just I think I just lost visually lost it when she's literally staring at whichever character at the corner of the ceiling, and <laughs> Viago's <laughs> grabbing the leg, and then she's like, "Smoke alarms." I'm like, "Okay, yeah, look at cool. that. no smoke alarm." <laughs> yeah, no smoke alarms. Also, no smoke alarm down here again. You know, <laughs> it was very bad yeah. guys. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, you George what was your favourite I think like there's so like it's such a quotable film like I'd say mm. obviously the police scene like, is, and I do want to check out Wellington Paranormal because I haven't yet and yeah, I, haven't I, didn't I actually know that that was I thought I, read, I thought I read that it was happening but then it wasn't but then that's weird werewolves or something wasn't it that one hasn't yeah so yeah, yeah there's um, mm. I'll, I'll, I'll talk about yeah there was um, did been swearing for a while that they were going to make a movie called We Are Wolves that was just based on the werewolves of this movie, so it would start. Like well, and I wonder why movie. it didn't happen because they were swearing. That's against the werewolf code. <laughs> <laughs> That's how they started this movie. That's an no, automatic no-no. <laughs> they kind of said they were going to do it after this movie, and then um, they interviewed. This is such a hilarious interview with Taika Waititi because it's obviously been so long now, and he's like. Um, that's the movie that um, Jermaine Clement and I keep threatening we're going to make. And at this point, we should stop talking about it because it's kind of like the dad who says that he's going to be home for Christmas and he just never is. Just and it's isn't. like, <laughs> <laughs> at this point, it's just like, yeah, sorry, son, another year. <laughs> we can't do it. So uh, he says, we don't know if we will, but we do want to make it. But who knows if it'll actually ever happen. So we'll see. But uh, yeah, that's fair enough. Uh, just to finish off, then my favourite scene uh, personally was the dinner party scene, just because it sets everything up straight away. And I love, I really do just love the whole stupidity of like, uh, you like your the fact they can't pronounce spaghetti for a start. You like your pizzetti, yeah, pizzetti, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was, like, was pizzetti. Dumb humour is as, as I often uh, relate to, and then like the whole idea of you like your pizzetti, oh, well, well, me you like your worms, oh. <laughs> and then as we said, the whole kind of like, well, I thought she was a virgin. Would you see whether I would? <laughs> I do like the bit later on when it refers to that when Nick's trying it with the uh, the chips. Do you like worms? Yeah, because like... <laughs> it only works with food that already looks like worms. <laughs> Yeah, even exactly. even like literally a, a small mini scene is them in the nightclub briefly when they get into like Boogie Wonderland or whatever it's called. And <laughs> it's just Tiger at the camera and he's like, Oh my god, this place is everything I wanted it to be. It looks so fabulous. And you just see him behind the girls and he's literally just about to go in for the bite and then turn around and he's <laughs> yeah. like, Oh and yeah. then there's, a, there's another the scene goes that to somebody I... at the bar. Yeah. There's another scene that I love that I, it, this isn't really because it's funny or whatever, but just from a technical standpoint and the fact that you, it's kind of a thinker when they, they go to the kind of the masquerade or whatever, which, you know, 666, it's set on the 6th of the 6th of 6th or whatever, uh, but they're at the masquerade and it shows you every, it shows you the dance floor and everybody on the dance floor and it cuts over to the mirror and the only ones there are like the zombies because obviously yeah, yeah. Wouldn't, <laughs> wouldn't reflect, so it's suddenly like way less people. <laughs> And I was like, wow, that's actually, for a visual gag, that must have been a nightmare to put together. And yet, I never use it. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, fair enough. And uh, we've already mentioned, uh, I may as well start us off. Yes, my favourite line is definitely, um, why do we drink virgin blood? Compare it to a sandwich. You'd just enjoy a sandwich a lot more if you knew that nobody had <laughs> fucked it. Which yes. uh, I, I love that line because it's really funny. And it also, it's the perfect example of how uh, humour can develop into something better because in the short film, that line is just, you'd enjoy a sandwich a lot better if you knew that nobody else had ate it. And I was like, oh, that's oh, not okay. any, oh. nearly as funny. And they clearly found the, like, if you knew nobody had fucked it before the movie. And I was like, see, they, they crushed it with that one. So, yeah. Yeah, so <laughs> like you, Mike, I watched the Blu-ray, but I watched the What We Do in Transylvania thing instead. I didn't get oh, to watch right. the um, the short, the, 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 yeah. the original short. But the Transylvania yeah, yeah. is literally just a companion piece. It doesn't really, it, that wasn't set before this or anything. There's nothing like behind the scenes on that. That's just another little right. random short film. 
I believe. That's right. I didn't watch that one, but I do want to kind of get around to it because I watched the deleted scenes and then the short, excuse me. <clears throat> and that was it because at that point it was getting late <laughs> on my uh, viewing night. So I was like, oh, well, that's probably plenty. We'll go to bed now. <laughs> and then I did not go and masturbate into a coffin. But <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so TK, what was your favorite line of the movie then? You have already said it, the sandwich. Oh, it was, wasn't it? The sandwich. Yeah. It's, it's just the way the way he delivered it as well. It was just really well mm-hmm. done. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and, uh, Connor and George, is it the same line, or do you have uh, different ones? I was going to go for the sandwich, but um, I think <laughs> was. On, the, on, on, on the deacon dishes line. Like, I'm so embarrassed when people come over. What does it matter? You bring them over, you kill them. Vampires don't do dishes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, because of the whole, yeah, ridiculous and uh, with the mundane, mundane but looks, fucking absolutely. it's great. It's so well delivered. <laughs> and yeah, that would have been my second choice on a similar note is that uh, you can't have, you know, just be flying around the house and people will notice you've got an entire camera crew here. <laughs> just so dumb. But uh, what about you, Connor? I know, it's just another Vlad, you know, I'll go for dead but delicious look. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. He's so egotistical. you got to love it. But uh, awesome. Uh, so then, did you want to get with the? Did, did you guys all write a little conclusion and your score out of five? Or um, no, 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 no. I literally no. just put quotes know. down. Yeah, Fair enough. Um... <laughs> I just put random quotes. Well, did you want to just give us a quick sort of summary of what you thought of the movie, and then give us your score out of five? Then, and then myself and DK have probably got conclusions that maybe way too long. <laughs> so, yeah. um, we'll start with you, George. Why not give us your uh, quick uh, final thoughts, opinion, and then a score out of five? Um, final thoughts, opinion. I would say it's a very, it's low budget, but it uses everything to its advantage. It's so like the script is so tight and well written, and the directing and the like the framing device all works in its favour to really sort of enhance it and it just it works so well as a as a character piece really yeah like it's not really there's not many set set pieces if you can call them that kind of thing like in this it's just like you know not the werewolf thing like kind of is maybe yeah. but um it's just the story about these characters and it's so well done and i really enjoy it i'd probably give it a four out of five awesome awesome uh, what about you connor it, again, it's just my introduction to the mockumentary format. It's just uh, the supernatural concept being brought down to such a mundane, generic human level that just makes it such an appealing. Like, even if people wouldn't watch this sort of format or comedy and just, they're just like, why on earth would I want to watch this? Just just give it a go. Just watch it and just be amazed at how good acting can really be in such a smoke, like low budget, small, small scale film that doesn't connect to anything. All right. The show came out afterwards, but back then when we, they made this film, they didn't know they were going to have any more installments. Um, 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 but no, like George, I'd give it a four out of five. I do think like we keep saying the show just did this film, but better overall on the scale. And like the show just doesn't want to end nowadays. So it's just the show literally is bigger, badder, better as all sequels should be. Um, but no, four out of five, just very much the closest to a perfect film as there is. But it's a good introduction piece, I think. Definitely, yeah. It's a franchise launcher, definitely. Um, well, mm. before I go on to myself and DK's thoughts, then it just occurred to me that we, we uh, probably should have done audience interaction uh, first. So we'll split our kind of opinions halfway through there uh, and we'll go to the audience. To the electronic section. mail. <laughs> yeah, so we, we put uh, the information on the Google machine. And, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, we asked um, around various Twitter and Discord groups and things for audience uh, opinions on the movie. Uh, TK, did you want to give yours first? I thought you said you had uh, maybe two or three. Yeah, I uh, I asked the guys in the screen talk on Facebook group what they thought. Uh, Dave Trower, the admin, he says it wasn't as funny as I'd hoped, but I enjoyed it for the most part. The well, the werewolves were my favourite. Uh, Justin Williams from the group said, I love the movie and I love the TV series even more. And Chris Beaver said, I really love it. It's pretty much perfect in my eyes. I'll go through my stuff then. So as I often do, if I remember, I did put out a poll. Didn't get a massive response, but we have got some. Uh, So I just said, what would you rate what we do in the shadows, the movie out of four bats? (laughs) uh, Bats? Bats? (laughs) <laughs> but uh, the one bat it sucks uh-huh. score uh, got 0%. Uh, two bats below average got 13%. Uh, three bats mm. decent got 25%. Uh, but again, the runaway winner was four bats excellent with 63% of the vote. Uh, and just in terms of some individual things, 
Um, on Twitter, the girl who waited says, I saw it recently with my husband. It was good, better than I thought it would be. So uh, fair enough. At Greg Amos 13 said, I found it a, del a delightful change from all the stereotypical monster films. Every character had actual character, which is why I think it translated so well to the TV version. Uh, that's fair enough. Over on Facebook, my cousin Maddie O'Neill just said, this is a great movie. Uh, back on Twitter, Kimberly right. Chapman uh, said, I absolutely adore the movie, but I found the TV show very meh and gave up on it after a while. Uh, the movie Whoa. is utterly delightful. I know Whoa. it's weird. <laughs> utterly delightful. It's been a few years since I watched it, but it's frequently on iPlayer, so I should probably rewatch at some point. Um, also on Facebook, my friend Jane Marley said, um, I've not seen it, but I'll take a look as I like Taika Waititi's stuff. Uh, she then said, found it on Amazon Prime. That's tonight's viewing sorted. Someone at work has told me about it previously when telling me about the series. So it's a timely podcast from you. I didn't know it was Ta Taika Waititi, though, so I've now moved it up the viewing order. So we'll see what she thinks when she's watched it. Uh, and I believe the other things are all from the uh, Discord group that I'm a part of. Uh, a Charming Little Lad says, that movie slaps dog. <laughs> Gum <laughs> Cuzzler, what a name, uh, says, great movie, we're werewolves, not swearwolves. Uh, Mystery Angel says it's a 10 out of 10. Even the show is great. And the other things I have are all from uh, Letterboxd, actually. So uh, my friend Rats and King says, What We Do in the Shadows is a very funny movie, but it's not going to be on my all-time favorite comedies list. Not because it wasn't funny, but just because vampires don't really interest me unless they're gorgeous naked lady vampires from outer space. <laughs> but that doesn't mean that it's not an insanely clever and funny movie because it is, and you should definitely watch it. Also, Stu is just the best. 8.2 out of 10. Uh, my friend Alex Marzonia simply says, exhaustingly hilarious and gives it four stars. Uh, and Lordly Kicker says, I was surprised to see this movie didn't suck. Stealing my joke there. And gives it three and a half stars <laughs> out of five. So uh, that was all the feedback I had. So uh, TK, do you want me to go first with my conclusion and score or would you rather go? Oh, I'll go first. I'll get it out of the way. Fair enough. Go for it. All right. I was I was reticent when it came to what we do in the shadows, as the genre has never really appealed to me as such after being very heavily exposed to The Office a few years ago. But I was pleasantly surprised by this. It's quite an understated hour and a half, but it's got some really funny moments. There's enough good situational comedy in there, even for those not particularly familiar with vampire tropes, to carry it along so it never feels like a chore. I often think comedy of this genre works better in smaller chunks, but nevertheless, I found it harmless, enjoyable, and while I don't think it'll ever be a personal favourite, it sold me on the premise enough for me to want to try both the series of the same name and the Wellington Paranormal series. And I wouldn't be opposed to watching this again, maybe to pick up on what I uh, missed the first time around. And I'm going to give it 3.5 out of 5. Okay, fair enough. Awesome. Um, that's all right. Well, my conclusion then, I just said it's a film which shouldn't really seem as fresh, given that it's made up of elements which aren't super original, but the merging of the Spinal Tap documentary style with the surreal nature of the vampire tropes makes for brilliant humour, mined perfectly by masters of the craft. It's not especially deep, and while it's highly quotable and always funny, it lacks a degree of rewatchability, but you can see why it launched a successful mm. franchise, cleverer than it appears, joyfully amusing with lots of cool ideas, acting and writing, definitely worth sinking your teeth into. Uh, and I also give it four out of five. <laughs> Thank you for applauding well, my terrible well, board. Well, well, puns absolutely intended. <laughs> Thanks absolutely. all around. Yeah, so um, bear, with me while I, <laughs> bear with me while I try to work out the average for the podcast then. So, uh, yeah, okay. Um, fair enough. So that comes to, let's say, 15 and a half divided by four of us. Uh, so, yeah, the average for the podcast, then the final score would be 3.8 out of 5 for what we do mm -hmm. in the shadows. Mm. So, not bad. DK dragging the average down, <laughs> I think, a little there. But, uh, yeah, not, not a bad score at all, 3.8 out of 5. So, yeah, awesome. Uh, yeah, speaking of Taika Waititi, I have just watched uh, Lightyear, which has him in a voice acting role. Uh, and you can catch our review of Toy Story 2 talking about that um, on the channel from... I Best think, Toy Story film. Weeks ago. <laughs> uh, you can also oh, light, yeah, definitely. <laughs> you can also wait a week, and you can catch our review of Taika Waititi's film Thor Ragnarok, which we will be talking about um, in time uh, because, because uh, 
<laughs> in timely fashion, Taika Waititi will be bringing out Thor Love and Thunder at the same time that we review that, so that'll be handy. So I'm going to ask everyone if you have any uh, details that you wanted to sign off with uh, where people can find you, uh, starting with you guys. Uh, George, where can people find you? You can find us, um, Pace the Sheep, across Facebook, Twitter and Instagram, and the YouTube, which is where um, we mostly preside, mainly because... Um, I haven't really got my arse in to give, but I, I've, I've had some changes in my life, so I'm kind of trying yes. to piece my life back together. So um, Definitely. we will uh, try to again on stuff. the new arrival. So yeah. Oh, thank you, <laughs> awesome. mate. Um, and we will have people like we've had. Um, we had Michael on to talk about Morbius, and um, we probably won't put him through such torturous um, circumstances <laughs> next time he's on. Morbin time. There will be no more Morbin time. Yeah, in terms of we'll all make, I ever do is talk about vampires with you guys. <laughs> I know that's a theme. It's a that's theme. true. <laughs> that's very true. Um, we'll have to try and get you on to talk about something that. Um, Better, <laughs> yeah, less better. supernaturally, yeah, exactly. less supernaturally. Yes. Um, <laughs> well, if you're you struggling when there's Marvel handle. finishes, I'll come and talk about that if you want. So, yeah, why not? And, um, yeah. we, um, you can email if you want to get involved in the podcast, like a similar audience interaction, but you know, we don't really have any of it. It's a barren wasteland, it's barren, like the barren. <laughs> oh, um, like barren. Um, Connor, you do, you can say the email because you yeah. like doing the electronic mail, yeah. So, again, this is the electronic mail. At the Nerd Bible Contact, Nerd Bible Contact at the gmail.com. <laughs> at, at gmail.com. Google Mail people, Nerd Bible Contact at gmail.com. Or write it down on some creepy paper. <laughs> <laughs> oh, creepy paper. <laughs> Master, <Nice>. it's crap. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and, some people, but the people were on drugs, and now I'm a wizard. Drug blood. <laughs> 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 we, do we have anywhere that people can find you personally, Connor? Um, no, not really. No, right I'm here, it is it's on pasty sheep. Um, hasty <laughs> con, which I made for this specifically for this recording, but I didn't have to use it in the end. <laughs> oh, well, fair enough. Pasty yeah. underscore, pasty underscore, underscore con. <laughs> <laughs> That's so weird. You did have really... a Twitter name that you like didn't use, so like Connor doesn't really yeah. do social media unless it's like Instagram. So, well, fair maybe enough. follow him on that. He's always on the YouTubes anyway, weekly with uh, with George, so that's fair enough. And uh, DK, did you want to shout out anything uh, for the peeps? No, nothing really. I can just be found here, just hanging around. <laughs> Chained to the yeah. desk. Yeah. <laughs> just con- contracted. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're getting tired of giving all our details now, so you can kind of find all of our, you know, Twitters and Facebooks and everything in the descriptions. It'll always be there. You know where we are. So you can always look there and find it. And uh, yeah, in the meantime, do join One us again. One human alcohol week. beer, please. <laughs> <laughs> you can join myself and DK with a special returning guest Toby next week reviewing Thor Ragnarok and uh, yes in the meantime uh, I'm going to let Connor and George sign us off <laughs> well hopefully we get hopefully we can get you both um, on the podcast soon but I will sign off with the wise words that he's as mad as a wax banana <laughs> <laughs> thanks a lot guys it's been awesome having you on take care bye 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 In the epic words of Arnie, I'll be back. Thank you.